Hi, welcome to a session based on Nassim Hikmat's poem titled Some Advice to Those Who Will Serve Time in Prison Included in the area World Poetry in the Second Semester Undergraduate Course Syllabus of Calicut University Appreciation is purely a subjective activity Depending on several factors such as the taste of the content, language, identifiable context, accessibility and so on, the degree of appreciation varies. If a poem is prescribed for studies and if it is meant for appreciation, it is actually a tricky affair. Paraphrasing is easy but the demand here is appreciation. Paraphrasing, they say, will kill the poem. So we are not supposed to do that. Still, we have been provided a way. Nan said that we should not describe an experience. Appreciating poetry is describing an experience. Irrespective of whether the poem is prescribed for studies or not, irrespective of whether it is written by a man or woman, irrespective of whether it is meant for pleasure or empathy, irrespective of whether it is written yesterday or centuries ago, irrespective of whether it is written by an Indian, American, Lebanese, Turkish or Latin American writer, let's take it in a particular way that it is there and it is written for me, the exclusive reader, to read. We should know that not all poems are vulnerable for this kind of a take. But some advice to those who will serve time in prison, I think, is a bit open for such a reading. Now let's read the poem. If instead of being hanged by the neck, you are thrown inside for not giving up hope in the world, your country, your people, if you do 10 or 15 years apart from the time you have left, you won't say that I had swung from the end of the rope like a flag. You will put your foot down and live. It may not be a pleasure exactly, but it's your solemn duty to live one more day to spite the enemy. Part of you may live alone inside, like a stone at the bottom of the well. But the other part must be so caught up in the flurry of the world that you shiver there inside when outside at 40 days distance a leaf moves. To wait for letters inside, to sing sad songs or to lie awake all night staring at the ceiling is sweet but dangerous. Look at your face from shave to shave. Forget your age. Watch out for lies and for spring nights and always remember to eat every last piece of bread. Also, don't forget to laugh heartily. And who knows, the woman you love may stop loving you. Don't say it's no big thing. It's like a, the snapping of a green branch to the man inside. To think of roses and gardens inside is bad. To think of seas and mountains is good. Read and write without rest. And also, and I also advise weaving and making mirrors. I mean, it's not that you can pass 10 or 15 years inside and more. You can, as long as the jewel on the left side of your chest doesn't lose its uh, list. Now, look for a single word or two words representing the poem. I have given an example. The example is freedom. Now, there are a few words that I identified as you may find is related to the poem. In my actual classroom, mostly the students make me wonder the way how our thoughts go. But due to the constraints of the medium, let's look at the pool of ideas uh, that may add flavor to our understanding of the poem. If you notice, I found three categories of words in three different colors. First of which is inextricably connected with our general perception of imprisonment. 
perhaps we would read the poem from the preconceived notions and we would find some of these words suffering sadness isolation trauma captivity and independence of course a despair also comes as part of this group and if you are an optimist or if you are a sensitive person if you think about your family and if you think about the future and all if you think about time probably the word that you have listed may con- may maybe included in the words listed in blue color hope time seasons family happiness distance or love and if you have a spirit of dissin you might have identified one likely to be included in the third category country people resistance rejection danger optimism memory crime justice survival confidence and protest there is a reason why i placed the word protest in de- uh, in red color this poem prescribed in your syllabus comes under the category of protest poetry and now i just have a glance through the poem again and what did you identify uh, particularly about this poem it's not a lengthy poem at all it doesn't have any fixed rhyming pattern it does not carry any significant word play the poem speaks it speaks about a reality it thinks and it makes you empathize so what we could assume is this the purpose might not be just to please us to make us revel in the realm of imagination it may make us think not all poems are meant to bring revolutions we know some are neither created for resistance nor for revolt however despite the character of the poet and the circumstances some poems carry the essential trait of dissent they question the status quo they share the message of disapproval and they carry nuances of resistance hidden or overt sometimes poets do participate in the protest offered by the poem in other times poems carry forward the revolution initiated by the poet so what i am trying to tell you is this some poets are activists because they envisage transformation they fight against injustice nazim hikmat was one among them for that he had to sacrifice a lot one could see about his choice he made an ideological choice and uh, was imprisoned for that before we know more about hikmat it would be interesting to taste a few lines from a few other writers who resembled hikmat in the style of writing of poetry and this is a piece from langston hughes of harlem renaissance for your understanding harlem renaissance was a cultural and intellectual resistance movement of 1920s initiated by afro americans let me read the piece uh, taken from the poem titled i look at the world from langston hughes i look then at the silly walls through the dark eyes in a dark face and this is what i know that all these walls oppression builds will have to go here is another one from the beat poet allen ginsberg from his poem titled america america when will you be angelic when will you take off your clothes when will you look at yourself through the grave when will you be worthy of your million trots gates america Why are your libraries full of tears? America, when will you send your ex to India? I'm sick of your insane demands. And what is common for these forms? They protest, they resist and they are 
meant to transform the mindset. Both of them belong to a big movement called avant-garde. You might be thinking why I am talking about avant-garde. Actually, our writer Nazim Hikmat belongs to a group of poets called Turkish avant-garde. Beginning in the 20th century, the term avant-garde has been applied to a wide range of social activities from military to political to artistic. Since the early 20th century, however, it has most commonly been used to designate those artists who in making the work of art knowingly transgress aesthetic and social norms, seeking thus to scandalize, to disrupt established canons of taste and to criticize the limits of society and project utopian alternatives. So they wanted poetry to go beyond the limits of uh, tradition. They wanted to shock the sensibility and also they envisaged some alternative kind of poetry of perfection. Critics consider avant-garde poetry spoke ahead of time. They are original and innovative. They reject conventions, formal, material and linguistic. There are a few related movements. They are modernism and Harlem Renaissance. The language of avant-garde poetry resembles a political statement. They gather unique readership too. Umberto Eco, in an open book, stated that avant-garde envisages participatory construction of the audience. This is true in the case of Hikmat too. And a Turkish writer in his introductory notes on Turkish poetry, made a statement about uh, the particular nature of Turkish poetry. The writer's name was Mustafa Siyalin. He said, Turkey is a country which is in many ways located, if not caught in between, between Asia and Europe. That's about the geographical position of the country. Turkey. Between East and West, between Ottoman Empire and Republic Turkey, between fundamentalism and secularity. Turkish is located between the written and spoken, perhaps with more emphasis on the spoken. This is illustrated best by its marked reliance on the context. Who says what to whom is very important perhaps more than it is in the case of Western languages. And this is very important when you study the Turkish writer Nasim Hikmat, who says what to whom is very important, perhaps more than it is in the case of Western languages. Now, it would not be a bad idea to know the writer and the context of the poem. Nasim Hikmat was a poet, playwright, screenwriter and director. He was called as a romantic revolutionary. Hikmat was a son of an Ottoman government official. Ottoman government was an autocratic kind of government. Learning of economics and political science from Moscow probably made him a Marxist. He's, he worked as a journalist for a while. His ideas are definitely anti-establishment. And for that, he was sentenced to more than 30 years of imprisonment. In 1940s, his imprisonment grabbed worldwide intellectual attention as a result of the hunger strike organized by intellectuals such as Sartre and painters such as uh, Pablo Picasso and actors such as Paul Robson. In 1950s, he was released. 
he was uh, uh, he served in some prisons uh, named prison in bursa the infirmary of sultanate jail in istanbul and pasakbisi prison the ottoman empire was a state and caliphate that controlled much of south east europe western asia and north africa between 14th and 20th century it run as an autocratic kind of a uh, rule for which it was criticized by writers nasim hikmat was only one among those writers who criticized the ottoman empire after the rigorous imprisonment for long years he left turkey and lived in europe and soviet union for the rest of his life the exile did not prevent him from standing for the communist ideals that he cherished the influence of russian futurist poetry led him to revolutionize turkish poetry which he entered writing to which he entered writing patriotic poems in syllabic meter abandoning ottoman linguistic conventions in writing he finally resorted to free verse the posthumous republication of his works popularized him as a hero of turkish revolutionary spirit his poems are famous for experimental style radical perspective and unorthodox standpoint three important features of his poems are iconoclasm that is the action of rejecting the cherished beliefs and institutional values second one is patriotism devotion to one's own country and the third one is lyricism imaginative and musical expression of emotion and now here is a poem by hikmat that will just uh, that we will just read which will provide an entry into his prison poems the poem is titled as today is sunday sunday today today they took me out in the sun for the first time and i just stood there struck for the first time in my life by how far away the sky is how blue and how wide then i respectfully sat down on the earth i leaned back against the wall for a moment no trap to fall into no struggle no freedom no wife only earth sun and me i'm happy when coming to the poem some advice to those who will serve time in prison perhaps the following questions may give us some direction how does the writer problematize imprisonment what is the difference between imprisoned by chance and imprisoned by choice would it is like to be imprisoned where could be the time and space of the writing why is the writer giving advice when could he be giving advice and how i would say that writing during imprisonment will be quite different from the writing after the imprisonment and coming to the title of the poem the title serves two functions it directs us to the idea that the poem depicts the thoughts on prison also it prompts us to answer the question why the writer wrote such a poem and also the it it makes us think about the nature of imprisonment whether this is physical imprisonment or metaphorical imprisonment the title speaks about the experience and not only speaks about the experience but also it spoke about what was inferred from that experience the word advice suggests that unless you are well experienced perhaps you may not be able to give advice so 
we may get some glimpses uh, regarding the duration of imprisonment too and also we get a feeling about his a uh, concept about himself that he is an expert to talk about imprisonment and there is humor in that it contains a message as to how to take the experience of imprisonment the writer took it li- as light as possible and he conveys a world view too your purpose is more important than the troubles that you may encounter The development of the poem is definitely harmonious. It doesn't have much interruptions. The initial lines lead us to a plane of comparison where you compare death sentence with imprisonment and find imprisonment uh, has got some hope. It argues that the hopes are not simply personal. they are related to the country and the people and the message of the poem is always optimistic and this is what makes it as significantly different from the modern poems and um the country did not disappoint him the people did not disappoint him but uh, the government did disappoint him and he was talking about that disappointment if it is about disappointment the sense of time is lost when we are confined in addition we are compromising our dynamism uh, and time to compromises its dynamic stride when at least for us uh, when we are imprisoned it would uh, stand still until we are released this would be our feelings and he was uh, talking about those feelings in the poem and here i would give a few points for discussion how the time spent inside the prison puts your life in a standstill how you turn realistic about the experience and what transformation will it bring in the thoughts of the prisoner and the time spent inside the prison will make us think about the new routines formed and the experience may make us uh, more mature uh, because uh, if we are in prison gradually we will be aware of the state and we know that the time too will pass if we are optimistic you might have noticed the realistic understanding of the life in the lines but i had swung from the end of the rope like a flag you will put your foot down and live a man uh swung from the end of the rope uh, is compared to a flag and it suggests about martyrdom and it seems that he doesn't want to be a martyr a person who is killed for a belief or for nation probably because he will be treated later as a traitor rather than a patriot if he chose martyr also we notice how he valued life why are we here why we live there may be a reason seems he believes so it may not be a pleasure exactly in the poem the writer says but it's your solemn duty to live one more day to spite the enemy it would provide us some insights if we answer a couple of questions how it turns to be a duty being alive why did the writer think it as a solemn duty how is your existence in prison spite your enemy 
and who is the enemy in the context the last question is probably easy for us uh, because after reading the biography of the writer we might have identified the government as the enemy and so the government may be the enemy in the context because of its authoritarian standpoints and why is the writer considering it as a solemn duty it is a uh, why is it a serious and dignified duty because uh, uh, unless he lives the revolution that he initiated may die with him or he might be called as a traitor so it's uh, wise to live and it's the responsibility to uh, continue the revolution that he has initiated so for that he has to live it's not simply a duty towards oneself or it is better sensed as a duty towards one's own country and the people of the country and the writer identified that he has a mission to be fulfilled and he t- took up that mission and how is your existence in prison spite to your enemy that is another interesting point probably his presence is uh, threatening at least for the government uh, because uh, his presence uh, and his happiness uh, more about the punishment which is given to him and uh, it may convey a feeling that uh, you can't imprison the spirit of the revolutionary and all of these ideas lead to the political context of his imprisonment we could sense that the very act of living is a protest against the government it mocks at the people who thought that they hurt him and punished him the poem reveals a crucial idea one can question the government and still call oneself as patriotic here he problematizes the idea of patriotism in another poem titled uh, living he makes an important statement about the duty of living living is no laughing matter you must live with great seriousness like a squirrel for example i mean without looking for something beyond and above living i mean living must be your whole occupation some of us would read it as about focused living living for its own sake but uh, there is a possibility for uh, it to be connected with the, the idea of uh, living as a solemn duty part of you may live alone inside like a stone at the bottom of the well but the other part must be so caught up in the flurry of the world that you shiver there inside when outside at 40 days distance a leaf moves to wait for letters inside to sing sad songs or to lie awake all night staring at ceiling is sweet but dangerous the writer wanted to tell that you are both soft and rigid understand it and go ahead imprisonment should not transform you the only difference is isolation still you may be the same why is it why is uh, lying awake at night staring at the ceil- ceiling is sweet but dangerous it may be because uh, it will show us our vulnerability imprisonment was a time when we have to toughen up ourselves we may not uh, survive it sometimes otherwise so romanticizing may make us feel about us as worthless it shouldn't happen and a couple of questions again the writer makes the reader empathetic through the lines how 
the impact of the outside world on the culprit is so huge that he may shudder when the leaves move could you find any platonic kind of association and the structure of the other uh, writing resembled the dramatic monologue probably that will answer the first question and uh, about the platonic association i felt that nature loves him and he loves the nature back and again uh, in addition to that the, the particular word 40 days uh, has got a biblical association actually 40 days is a period from the resurrection of jesus to the ascension of jesus so he might be associating himself uh, uh, with jesus christ and there are three key words that we have to notice in connection with the lines that is wait sad songs and staring and what mood did they evoke i feel that he invokes the feelings of hope despair and uncertainty and here i think he may be talking about the priorities of the time of isolation look at your face from shape to shape forget your age watch out for lies and for spring nights and always remember to eat every last piece of bread also don't forget to laugh heartily what could be the priorities uh, for the period the priorities should be self esteem beauty optimism health and pleasure positivity should prevail it will fuel the life and who knows the woman you love may stop loving you don't say it's no big thing it's like the snapping of the green branch to the man inside to think of roses and gardens inside is bad to think of seas and mountains is good why is it so here the writer may be talking about the conscious avoidance of uh, what may depress us let's dream a big world rather than an idealistic romantic world what he repeatedly spoke is this romanticizing will put you in despair at the end then what do the mountains and seas standing for i think they stood for freedom what is the writer's concept about women and here i am a bit pessimistic do you suspect a misogyny in his lines prejudice against women is he thinking about women as somebody who couldn't understand the political purpose for which he was imprisoned don't know he uses a metaphor of jewel inside you that's heart the seat of sensitivity the spirit is to be maintained weaving and making mirrors would suggest a matter of creativity they also connote the need to produce followers and refine your wisdom to for a unified movement and here is the consolidation of the thoughts on the poem the writer projects living inside the prison as a protest the protest is political and it has placed an enemy seen or unseen he never said that the government is his enemy in the poem the presence of an enemy and the hope in the world country and the people may lead you to fight against the monstrous years it's wrong to live an ideal life even if you are in confinement productivity is essential for survival and it may be a message for the lockdown times too so 
The poem can be read as a universal poem too, taking it apart from the Turkish context. And there are other reasons too to consider it as a universal poem. Let's uh, read what Martin Luther King Jr. wrote in letter from a Birmingham jail in 1963. Injustice anywhere it is threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. And if you are interested, the, these are a couple of uh, pieces from uh, other protest poems. The Times They Are a Changing is a poem written by Bob Dylan. And here is a piece from that poem. There is a battle outside and it is raging. It will soon shake your windows and rattle your walls. For the times they are a changing. Here is another one from Maya Angelou from her work I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but long for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill. For the caged bird sings of freedom. And here is one from Identity Card by Mahmoud Darwish. Therefore, write down on the top of the first page, I do not hate people, nor do I encroach. But if I become hungry, the usurper's flesh will be my food. Beware, beware of my hunger and my anger. And if you wish to further explore, these are a few areas uh, for searching further. Protest literature across the world, contemporary Turkish poetry, poetry as uh, marking descent, and more for poems from the writer. Thank you very much.